Alright, it's uh, Sunday, March 11th, and it is now 16 hours into the day, and it's time for Common Sex. Well, um, I've been, been checking along, getting everything done I need to get done. I've been sort of meeting my schedule. Uh, I've even had a bit of a, a, a slowdown this uh, weekend. Uh, in terms of uh, I needed to sleep a little bit more to get used to uh, uh, all the, uh, the the workload, but uh, it seems to be that I'm getting everything done. It's just now that uh, uh, I have to start preparing for uh, for Monday, Tuesday, the, the next week, and I got to add in some more work uh, to try to sort of pick up the pace a little more. This is the goal now is that uh, for now and from now until uh, basically until August, it's to see how much work I can get done, and then after August, it's sort of an assessment of the work that I've done, and prepping for the new year where I start start all over again. So that's what's going on today. Today is more of an assessment day. Uh, I'll be finishing up. Uh, the episodes uh, Ubuntu BSD Unix Hotel and Cyborgs and Cybernetics. I should have the first preview uh, of the uh, the uh, documentary series for uh, the Bash Channel on 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 books in the library. Uh, this goes. This this is the one I did for Right and Proper Ladies uh, about Harry Potter. And Harry Potter is going to be the first in the series uh, of uh, the documentary. Every book has things in it uh, beyond the fiction. So if you're a person who loves to read, uh, the next step for you is uh, in your life should be research. Uh, and the research will particularly surround the library because uh, the library is the collection from which you 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 start your journeys uh, and th there is so much in the library that uh, you can discover and this is not just simply wonderful stories or, or, or fiction this is uh, and this is true for, for most books up until even 1980s um, most books were based on even the fictions were based on some form of reality. There was always some degree of uh, of reality to the fiction. I'll give you an example. Uh, there is the, the famous writer. If you're a reader and you're a geek and a nerd, you should know the name Ernest Hemingway. And the Ernest Hemingway has a lot of really cool st stories to read. Uh, and he is one of the authors that people should read. If you are a reader, this is one of the authors that you need to read uh, because he it has influenced a lot of other writers. This is the same thing can be true, say, same thing that can be said uh, for the women's Victorian authors. The women's Victorian authors, the, the, I should say the Victorian women's authors, kind of jumbled it up a bit, influence an enormous number of writers and they still are influencing writers t till today anyways uh, back to Ernest Hemingway uh, both Farewell to Arms which was about uh, a war uh, about a, a person uh, during uh, I think either World War One or World War Two, and there's the other one, uh, Old Man in the Sea. This is another of his his stories, a very famous story, uh, and I think it's on most of the people, uh, most kids' schools, most kids' uh, school book reading list. Uh, at some point in time during your uh, education in school, either in grade eight or grade nine, or even even later on, uh, the book Old Man in the Sea is assigned to be read, and it's one of the books that you should be reading. At least it was. Uh, back when I was going to school, but uh, it wasn't until much later on that I started looking into uh, the author that I found out that Ernest Hemingway, one, when he wrote *Old Man in the Sea*, was living in the Florida Keys. He was he was it, it, there around Cuba. He was in you know 
he spent an enormous amount of time in the era that he wrote the, st the, world, the story around. So the that story has an element of truth to it. Before that, we look at his other books, you'll find that he was a reporter for the Toronto Star and actually was a correspondent in some, in both like World War One and World War Two. So I have to go back and check on these things. This is sort of from my memory. Of what I, I had done this work uh, more than 10 years ago on Old Man of the Sea. It was sort of my, my first forays into uh, the library after sort of leaving uh, my work on puzzles, I started going into the, the library and looking at the library as this one massive puzzle that uh, you could sort of go out and explore the world through the library by going and collecting a large chunk of work. Um, uh, and the more of the work you collected in your library, the more you were able to see it. But the thing is, you had it, the the pieces of the puzzle, which were, were all the different books in your library or the different bits of information in your library, uh, had to be go out. You had to go out and find them all over the world. And so I started. I, I, I no, well, kind of all over. The world. My, I was limited to my world, and for me, my world uh, was at that time uh, secondhand bookstores and seeing uh, what secondhand books uh, actually had to say in them. And I picked up books that uh, were actually uh, old books that were before 1950, in 1960. Uh, and I wanted to see, and this is the cool part about these books, you can read a book as simply the story, or you can read it as the, the author's experience and how the author saw things. So if you're picking up a book between nine, before 1960, you can sort of see how these people thought and that's sort of what I wanted to do that between. I wanted to see how people saw things back then, so I wanted the older book. So uh, I spent my time uh, more often than not uh, walking around to different uh, secondhand bookstores, and I'd come out with uh, literally a box full of books. You know, I go there. And, oh, this is good. This is good. <laughs> it's like a kid in a candy store picking out all the good old, old you know, all the good old secondhand stuff. Because that's sort of what uh, interested me. Unfortunately, I think a lot of that, the, the secondhand bookstore experience is kind of gone now. Uh, it's been replaced by the internet, and uh, most people now, from what I've heard, is their, their primary source of information is Wikipedia. And that's not such a good thing, even though you can use it uh, as sort of a, a cheat sheet or a quick reference card. It is not what it sh should be. It's not your. It's not. It doesn't replace the library, and you can create the library on the internet, but you need to have a real library experience in, with the physical books. If you can't find these old secondhand bookstores, I I, I strong, strongly recommend you go take a look at these um, secondhand books. Uh, pick out some of the older ones, just buy them, and take them home and read them, and. Just go from that perspective, and it is a whole new experience rather than buying new. So, as I said, th this is the documentary that's coming uh, this week uh, to the Bass Chan the Bass Institute channel. Uh, it it's it's going to go from a look on books into. Uh, Understanding how to build a library so that you can go and do work uh, in the more library-oriented studies like archaeology, anthropology, uh, looking at ancient texts, uh, ancient languages, stuff like that. That's where this document, document, uh, documentary will ultimately be headed. And you can actually, from within the library, do an enormous amount of research in these areas. And this is sort of what I'll be highlighting and I'll be going out and taking different trips and you know and I'll show you these trips uh, from a researcher's perspective. So you'll be basically seeing uh, in, in this documentary it will eventually go into what they call library research and I'll show you how uh, all this is done. And this is you know would be sort of important for those of you who are at the university, my university, 
called Academia University, uh, whether you're there as a um, under, called UEP, which is Undergraduate Extension Program, which is for kids uh, grade three on up, and then you have uh, those who are in undergraduate and those who want to do beyond can do that as well. Uh, this is library science. You can sort of see how it's done. So if you're interested in library, this not if you're interested. For my students, uh, library science is the base. Uh, all studies come from within library science. You build your library, even if it's tiny and small, and then you begin your studies from there. So uh, that's what will be going on this week. Um, in addition to putting out the next episodes of the standard shows that I already have out. So, um, that's going to be it for today. And I will be posting, look for either tonight or tomorrow, uh, look for the two uh, computer science shows, Ubuntu, BSD, Unix, et al., and then uh, Cyborgs and Cybernetics. All right, I'll see you in a bit.